Hello and welcome once again to, we're going to discuss fuel injection. Obviously when you come to fuel injection you have to discuss the fuel rail and your fuel injectors. Those are the ones spraying out the mist into the cylinder, giving out fuel. Now, <clears throat> proper sealing is a main component over here. You have to seal the fuel injectors and also pressure regulators correctly with proper seals, O-rings like you see over here, <clears throat> head gaskets for engines. When you have, let's say, a reservoir, okay, could be power steering, could be brake fluid, and they go to lines, high pressure lines or um, brake lines, you have to have seals at the proper points. Otherwise, you will have leaks. So therefore, look at this fuel injector. Now, we're not going to schematics, we're going to pictorial. Pictorial diagram tells you how many fuel injectors you have here. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many cylinders in that engine? If you said it's a four cylinder, you're wrong. This is V6. If they have six injectors, you have a V6. Now, <clears throat> our O-ring is over here on the top. This is where the connector is going, okay? This is the electrical connector right here. The bottom one has an O-ring as a seal. The top one has an O-ring, <clears throat> okay? It's very important if they are cracked or brittle, Always put in, as a practice, put in new O-rings when you do this type of work. Now, <clears throat> you notice one more thing. Fuel inlet. What do you see over here? Another O-ring. <clears throat> Where is the fuel going in? In this direction. <clears throat> Through the fuel, fuel filter, fuel rail, it's coming in here. Where is it going out? The fuel is coming in here, spraying into each one. And then where's the outlet? Right here. And what do we have here? Another O-ring. To seal, wherever there's a liquid, you have to contain it. Okay, like we just said. Otherwise, you could have leakage problem. Now, let's say we have a problem. We're running too rich. That means we have too much fuel. Not enough air for that much fuel. They don't match. Okay, you get a code, you put the scanner, a code reader... And it tells you running rich. A faulty component can be where the fuel injector is leaking too much. When it's leaking too much, guess what happens? Guess what comes out here? Too much fuel. Too much fuel means the computer says, wait a second. This is the inputs, correct? Here's the engine. This is the intake. In. Exhaust, this is the out. Out. This is the byproduct of what comes in. If this is rich, which we have in our case, what does that tell you? That means there's something wrong with the input. The input in this case being <clears throat> too much fuel. From what? The fuel injector being leaky. That will give you that symptom of too much richness or too much fuel. Coming in here, oxygen sensor says, not my fault, I'm just reporting what's going on. I see too much fuel coming out from this mixture in here. I'm going to report it to the computer. The computer says, I can't control it. I cannot close it off to put less fuel because there's a problem with that component. But the computer doesn't know that that's a faulty component. You, That's what you have to figure out. So <clears throat> how important is it to have proper sealing? Like we said, if you have a power steering reservoir, like the Chevy Express fans, okay? On the bottom over here, when I looked, there's a fuse box, okay? There's other hoses over here. I see dampness all over. Wetness, I see. What's the first thing that you do? You look up, and you say it might be coming from something above. So, here's the reservoir, Power steering, PS, that's not power supply, that's power steering. Reservoir, not the pump, the reservoir. Is it possible it could be leaking from above? Yes, it can. This is the error that most mechanics make. If you think there's a leak over here because this is all damp, okay, with fluid over here on the, uh, on the fuse box or uh, on the bottom of it, you look, the first thing... 
that you're going to think of is, let me check the reservoir. It might be coming from up there. But guess what? The reservoir is full. Okay? It's not half empty or it's not, it's not partial empty. So what are you going to think? Oh, there can't be a leak from up there. But this is the error that most mechanics make. How about if somebody before you went saw that problem and said, you know what? I'm going to put in more fluid, more power steering fluid or transmission fluid, depending on, obviously, the make and model. I'm going to fill it up. Okay? So you're going to think right away, there's nothing wrong here. And it must be somewhere else. But how did it get to the bottom of the fuse box then if there's somewhere else? Could be from the coolant lines. Coolant, maybe there's a crack on the, on the, on the um, uh, uh, radiator, on the upper radiator hose, it could be. So that's a mistake to make. Don't, ex don't assume just because this is full, that there's no leak coming from there. The proper way to do it is to put a dye or to put a pressure tester on a coolant system on the radiator. You put a dye through it, <clears throat> through the system. Everything has a different dye. Then whatever is the problem will show up. A UV dye on the air conditioning. So <clears throat> seals are important. If you have your brake master, master cylinder, and you have lines going out, okay, to the braking system. These seals are broken or cracked or whatever. You're going to have leaks. But what happens? Somebody else already put the fluid in there. You're going to say, no, it's not, it has nothing to do with this. It has something to do with something else. From here to here to the vacuum booster, <clears throat> which gives us, multiplies the force from the, from the pedal. <clears throat> there, could, there are seals over here. This could leak backwards into this. <clears throat> Another example. You have your transmission here. You have four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive. You have a transfer case. Okay, transmission. Transfer case. There are seals in here. There are seals over here. You look at your transmission fluid. It's low. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Oh, no. A costly venture. I think, obviously, something is wrong. The clutches, the bands, anything, the, the pump, any, something might be leaking inside. But remember, there's a seal over here. If this seal over here is bad, guess where it leaks? It's going to leak right here. So you can't assume that that's that part right away. Now, another thing. I'll pause this for a second. Now, another word about seals, proper sealing. And this. also you have to understand one thing. There are transverse engines where the engines are going this way and sometimes longitudinal, longitudinal en um, engines going this way if it's rear wheel drive so the transverse engines going side to side let's say there's a radiator hose the radiator upper radiator hose over here goes through the thermostat this is under a lot of stress when you look for problems like i just said leaks you're going to look for parts that have high pressure those are the most vulnerable so in the cooling system that we have in the radiator <clears throat> it's a bad uh, pictorial but in the radiator the thermostat the housing are high pressure they stiffen up when you get coolant warm coolant going through them the thermostat just doesn't open at 190 degrees it might open at 130 140 it might partially open until it's fully open at 190 or 180 whatever the rating is for that thermostat it doesn't open like a switch it takes time for it so it's under tremendous pressure this radiator hose that's the one that you look for how do you know you squeeze it make sure it comes back to its original form it shouldn't be too hard too stiff should be too soft too spongy now going also to high pressure lines from the power steering pump same idea those are the most vulnerable Okay, now in compressors also, in cooling line, in uh, air conditioning, what has the high pressure? What's a compressor? We're compressing a vapor, a gas, from low pressure to high pressure. What do you think is going to take the bolt, the grunt of the, the, uh, the pressure? The compressor, obviously. 
Out here are O-rings. Sometimes you have problems with the O-rings where they leak. Why? Whatever is high pressure puts an amazing force, an amazing, um, uh, not pressure, but um, an amazing, um, thinking of the right word, um, ex, ex, uh, I'm thinking of the right word, uh, a tremendous burden, that's the word, <laughs> it took me time, a tremendous burden on that hose, on that component being a compressor, or power steering so those are the ones that you look for you concentrate on high on gaskets seals o-rings high pressure hoses <clears throat> actuators <clears throat> whatever has o-rings compressors <clears throat> okay that's what you concentrate on now to look at this on the radiator on the radiator over here, many people are not really familiar with this, but they also have transmission cooling uh, oil cooling lines on the bottom over here. <clears throat> Sometimes you'll see metal conduits or pipes. Here's the radiator. <clears throat> Here's the radiator. Excuse me. Here's the radiator. Okay? Here's the radiator. It's going like this. All the coolant is flowing until it gets where? To the bottom. To the bottom radiator hose. This was the top hose. This is the bottom hose. <clears throat> Once it gets here, it's already cooled off. But you still have tremendous transmission oil cooler over here. Sometimes you even have a power steering cooler next to the radiator. Sometimes you even have engine oil <clears throat> cooler Be and trucks, vans, because they get real hot. Remember, they are being used 24-7. <clears throat> so you need to cool off these parts now <clears throat> the radiator going to another part we just talked about <clears throat> a v6 v8 so a serpentine belt means one belt that is used for all the pulleys and obviously the popular on v8s and v6s <clears throat> the biggest one on the bottom is always the crankshaft pulley this is a pulley power steering if you would trace it back you would see it coming from the reservoir okay the reservoir which has the fluid the water pump usually goes to the fan if it's mechanical so therefore you would see the fan connected to this you know it's the water pump this is an air pump which is something on some vehicles that have air pumps where they where they introduce more air to have more com uh, combustion most don't have that most would have over here they would have a compressor over here sometimes it's up here the compressor the clutch sometimes it might be down here the tensioner is the one that gives tension as you can see it's giving tension on the belt see how it's pushing it down it's giving tension this one over here by you can see by these fins over here cooling fins a fan is the alternator so Needless to say, if this is loose, and you always hear that ticking noise, sometimes it's no, it's it's loose. As it warms up through friction and everything gets warmer, the belt gets warmer and that noise goes away. You know you're dealing with something with a belt problem. However, it might be a pulley. You always, when you change this, when you change the serpentine belt, let's say after 60,000 miles, 70,000, you change the tensioner or an idle pulley. They even come with some kits. Now, how far is loose? How far is tight? If you could put in, if I could put my finger here and it could go down about a fourth of an inch or half an inch, that's good. If it goes down too much, it's too loose. If I can't put anything on it, it's too tight. Okay? Now, obviously, you can have cracks on it. With the right tools, you can see if it has cracks. Sometimes you have to take it off squeeze it you'll see the cracks but if they're bad enough you put a mirror on the here right you put a mirror on the here and you can see the cracks already now the fan that we just discussed <clears throat> has different pitches it actually adjusts itself see these fins it adjusts itself according to rpm the higher it is the less fan I need the less air being pulled in. So look at it. Look at the pitch of it. If this is called the pitch, look at it. 
an idol. Look how f- thick it is. I need more air being pulled in. As we go up, I'm cruising down the highway. I don't need so much. Why? Because I'm pulling in so much air when I'm cruising. So that's the things that are going on, and that's what I wanted to just go over. Um, please, if you found this informative, if you're learning anything from this channel, please subscribe. Please go to the channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto. This textbook that I use right here, I know I'm going to, this is what it's called. Okay? Over 25 years, nothing has changed. This even talks about fiber optic lights. Can you imagine over 25 years ago, this textbook talked about fiber optic lights in the lighting system, in your headlights, in your headlamps. How much is it today that we have fiber optic in all the vehicles? An amazing textbook. Like I said, my days, we didn't have YouTube. We didn't have Scott A. Kilmer and, and Chris Fix, which are the greatest of the greatest. We didn't. Ha- I had to learn everything from this, from a textbook. This is why I always come back to it, to the fundamentals. If you understand the fundamentals, if you understand the fundamentals, how this works, you will understand when you have a timing belt, a timing chain, hydraulic tensioner, you will understand everything because you know why? You understood the foundation. And that's why I always come back to the textbooks. I was not taught by YouTube or, or DVDs or anything like that 25 years ago. I just had to use and apply knowledge and it made me successful. So I hope you'll be on the same road. So please go to my channel, Joe Schematics for Auto. Thank you for watching.